Hi everyone, um, it's Ellen here and it's lovely to be speaking to you. Um, this is the first week of our um, alternative summer course and I've decided to um, take inspiration from Leonardo da Vinci's um, sketchbooks. These are um, lovely, lovely sketches of all kinds of natural forms um, and they are line drawings and they are enhanced and shaded using hatching and cross hatching. Um, this is a lovely exercise to get back into drawing if you haven't done that for a while. Um, for your subject you can do anything, you can do flowers, you can do fruit, um, you can do um, any sort of natural forms. These are sketches in anatomy, I'm not expecting that today. Um, but the inspiration that I want to take today is um, all to do with birds and um, Leonardo da Vinci um, did a lot of studies looking at um, how birds fly um, so that's what I'm taking my inspiration from um, so this is the <clears throat> image I'm going to be working from this is my uh, source image this is um, a drawing that I magically prepared earlier um, but um, I do, I think this is a, a lovely, lovely um, exercise to get back into things. Um, and what we're going to use is we're going to use um, a black biro. And I've got a range of biros here. As you can see, they are just common or garden biros that you find around the house. Um, each one um, has a slightly different colouring in the ink and um, has a slightly different mark. So what I would recommend doing is to take a scrap piece of paper and to try a couple of your pens out and just to see um, what their marks are like and how they handle. Um, also, a nice thing to do um, before we get into this is to um, practice um, drawing very, very light pressure with your biro, um, a middle pressure and then a heavy pressure as well. Um, I don't know if you can see that but um, there'll be different tonal values um, within your different pressures. Um, so we're going to be looking at cross hatching and um, in case anyone's forgotten, um, the beauty of uh, cross hatching is that you can build your shade up in layers. So for instance, um, you can go one direction for one layer, a second direction for another layer. <clears throat> and as you can see, as you go, as you add more layers to your hatching, the area becomes darker. The other trick with hatching is that um, the closer together your lines are, the darker the area will be. The further apart they are, the lighter your area will be. Okay, so let's move these for a moment. So this is the image that I decided to use. And this is my first drawing of it. So as always, um, when we start a drawing, we need to look at the structure that we are creating. So the first thing I looked at was the proportions of the bird and I wanted to get the um, direction line um, in as well. So in order to get a direction line, what I did was I created a horizontal like this. Oops. And then I looked at the direction of the body and the tail. And when you've done that, you can almost get an idea of the angle um, that you want your direction line to be in. So I'd say about 30 degrees or so. So when I was drawing this, the direction line from the end of the tail to the neck was that angle. Now I then noticed that the head was at a slightly different angle as it was pointing in a slightly different way. So for instance, this is the direction line for the head for the body, and then the head is slightly um, at a different angle. So it's just worth um, pointing that out. It's important to get these direction lines right, um, otherwise your bird starts to look very stiff and very wooden. Um, and actually it's something that's flowing and moving through the air. So it's important to get that sort of um, look of movement in there. 
Okay, so the next thing I did was I decided how wide I wanted my bird to be. I wanted it to fill the page. So I did my directional line coming all the way across. Um, and then obviously sorted out the head afterwards. Um, so what I did was I looked at my bird and I used my head as my unit to measure how big my bird was going to be. So I took the head width like this, back of the head to the beak. And then I wanted to know how many heads would fit into the bird. So one, two, three, four. It's quite nice, uh, quite easy. So what I did was I took the length of my bird from the beak to the tail and I cut it in half here. And I then cut it into quarters, which would give me roughly where the back of the head is. And I cut it into quarters here and that would give me the length of the tail at the end. So it's quite nice. You've got two portions in the middle for the body, one for the head, one for the tail, sort of from about here. Okay, so once I did that, I then wanted to know how big um, the body of the bird was. So I took my measurement of the head like this and I measured it into the body and that was about two heads high. So if I took that measurement and then turned it round to the direction line, I could come out either side of my direction line, giving me the width um, of the body. Okay, so the next thing I had to plot was the edges of the wings, which is quite tricky. So I took a point, I took a point where I have the back of the head here, where the body's oval and the head oval meet. I took that point there and I measured here and I measured the width from here to where this bottom wing comes out. So I took my head measurement like this and then I brought it out and I found out that it was two head lengths going across. Um, so yeah, so whatever you're using, whatever you're drawing, take one part as your unit and use that measurement to then plot where um, those parts are going to be. So if I knew where I was beginning from and where I was going to, I could then create the curve in the wing like that. Again, for this part, I would have taken the head height and counted how many head heights, that's two that way. And then how much of the width um, does this, or actually looking at it, this is level with the back of the head. So what I could do instead is I could take my line down and I could create a parallel um, here. So you can make a plumb line just coming down to give you to plot where the end of your wings are. Okay, so that's the basic structure of the bird. One thing I do need to say is that um, drawing out these feathers uh, can be quite ambiguous and can be quite difficult. So what I did was with a pencil, all of this is drawn with a pencil first and then I have um, found it in with a pen. What I did was I took the centre of each feather here and then I drew it into the picture. It's much easier when you're drawing to go from the middle to the outside um, therefore it's easier to draw the centre of the feather. It's more of a definite point whereas the edges they start to get a bit vague. Um, the only outside edges that I did draw the feathers were this line here and this line here um, because then it would give me a very definite edge to the wing but the rest is all the middle of the feathers now this area I don't want these lines to go through so I've drawn them in pencil but I haven't drawn them in pen um, so I can leave this area clean um, that's just in there so you can see what I've done um, this top part of the wing here again it's a bit of a vague shape so what I did was I created two oval shapes um, one here and one here just to give you the volume of that area and help, my, help myself understand uh, what that area is and then once I did that I could in pencil draw the outline and then uh, firm it in with a pen um, okay. The other thing that I did as well, which really helped actually, was I reshaped the head. As you can see, the head isn't really an oval shape. Um, 
I gave it an oval shape to start with. You've got to start with something. And then I um, then uh, created this shape. Um, and then that really helps to get the attitude of the bird in. Okay, so this is the basic structure and the basic lines that you used. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some shading into the bird. Now, this is my source image. I don't know how well you can see this. Um, as you can see, the body is quite light and these areas of the feathers are quite light. These feathers are different from these feathers. They look smaller and more downy. Um, so I will do a different effect than the feathers. Um, but this area here, I want to try and keep quite light, really. And as you know, we start light to dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start describing those lighter areas in the bird. And then we'll move on to the darker parts. So what I want to do with the body is I want to create a contouring. I want to create a rounded shape here and give um, an, image, uh, an idea of shadow on the sides and where the belly comes forward a lighter area. So that's what I'm going to work on first. So I'm turning my page because as you know we need to think about how comfortable our arm is and the movement of our wrist um, and I, my strongest marks tend to be um, coming towards me I have the most control doing that, so that's the way I want to draw it. So I'm going to start by just firming up this line first. Now biros are really quite forgiving, you can be quite light and flicky to start with and then if there's anything you're not sure about you can then cover it up quite easily and sort of blend it in um, as long as you start light and flicky. So I'm going to start by doing some contour hatching, um, which creates a sort of rounded effect. As you can see, I'm starting at the top, more pressure at the top, and then the pressure recedes as I go down the stroke like that. And then I want to um, create a little bit more shadow going across like this very very light just making it rounded I'm going to make this a bit more flowing I'm just going to put a couple of very light marks in just a little bit longer like that okay and then I'm going to create a couple of marks on the bottom as well following the contour of the body like this Now, there's going to be, the light is coming from above and it's coming from the right hand side. So there's going to be more shadow at the bottom than there is at the top. As you can see, this has kind of been a little bit on the heavy side. So I'm going to increase my shading a little bit on the, I don't really want to do any more up here. Obviously you would rub out these oval marks and these direction lines once you get into shading. Put a second layer of shading in here, like that, and you can see that because the lines are a little bit closer, the shading is a little bit more dense in there than the top half. I'm going to leave it there for now. Okay, so the legs, quite conveniently, are in the in the source picture and in my picture. They are just a black area. I don't have to worry about drawing legs. Um, so I'm going to um, put that in. The smaller, there's sort of a more dense area of shading here and then uh, lighter shading going around the outside. So this is the, these are the black markings, which I'm going to do in a minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to the darker shade in the middle like this. I don't want to go too heavy too quickly and then I can fan out lighter marks. So I'm just doing one flick. I'm not going scribbling, I'm just putting one 
flick out like that and it just softens the edge the area in between the darker shading and the lighter shading and now we're going to do the same at the bottom and again it just softens that down like that I have quite a dark area at the bottom of the bed here which is just solid black like this so full pressure well whatever's comfortable and obviously the lines very close together like that Once you've coloured all that in, you can then put your shadow around the bottom of the bird. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of this very stark white and stark black and we want to just soften it and blend it a little bit. So I'm going to do some shade, some hatching going like this. I don't want to go over this line so I'm starting here and flicking inwards and that will keep that side very clean and I want to do the same on the other side so I'm turning my page round but I want my directions my the lines of my hatching to be in the same direction so I want to go back the same way it's important really when you're doing your hatching to keep your direction going the same way otherwise it makes things look messy and um, it, it sort of stops the bird making sense really and I've just blended it into this hatching here and it just helps add that shadow into um, the bird because the top is going to be lighter than the bottom I'm going to put another layer coming up like this Again, starting from the bottom and flicking it up because I want to keep this edge clean. Okay, so really you're just building up in the different areas using your different directions. Okay, so the next area I want to look at is the um, areas with the shorter downy feathers. Um, in the wings here. Now again as I say the light's coming from the top so this is going to be darker and this is going to be lighter. I'm going to do this one first um, and then I'm going to be very very light doing that area at the top. So in an ideal world we would have rubbed out these um, lines here um, because we don't want the the wings to go through that area but um, so now I'm going to add some shadow under the bird. So again, I'm starting where I don't want to be. I don't want to be in this area here. So I'm starting on the line and I'm pulling away from it. <clears throat> and I'm putting my shadow in like that. And I want the feathers, now these feathers, they tend to kick out this way. And I want these downy feathers to be slightly different. I want them to come in this way. I want to um, have a, a very clear difference between the two. And also, it kind of helps the shape of the wing. If you have this part curving inwards and then this curving outwards, it gives the um, impression of movement and form. Um, so, I'm going to turn my page around. And I'm going to start creating these kinds of marks coming this way. Now what we don't want is to have everything very universal and regular and the same. Um, for our pictures, what makes them interesting is difference and contrast. So leave different areas of gaps in between. Make your lines different lengths and different sizes. Um, and it will add to that variety and make your picture much more interesting. Okay, so I've started to do that and now I want to add more shadow. So I'm coming down. So again, I'm adding another layer to the shading like that. And I want to make a difference between the body and the wing. So I want a bit of contrast in there. 
like that. And then it will be all to be shaped. I do want some description at the bottom of this area, so I'm going to just very lightly put a little bit of hatching in here. Not too much at the edge. I'm also going to add some definition at the edge of the wing here. Just to make it clear. But this area I want to be quite clean. I'm just going to soften this and give it some variety. We're putting another direction in there. Okay. I think I'm going to make this a little bit more solid in the middle because I'm aware that the wing at the top is lighter. I don't want to go too heavy too quickly. Okay, I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to look at the top wing now. I'm going to try and go lighter than this one. So, I've got my edge of my wing here, which I'm just firming up like this. And I'm going to start adding some shadow coming down, just vertical lines coming down like this very lightly. As you can see I've got a line here that I don't want, that's fine, I can kind of soften that in to my drawing, I'm not going to worry about it. A couple of lines. And now what I want to do is I want to almost get the impression of tension um, where the wing is being pulled um, so I'm going to put some lines, again turning my page round, I'm going to put my lines from the bird's shoulder going out towards the wing. Again being very kind of light and flicky. And I'm going to do some from this side too. Like that. I'm now going to soften the edge of my wing part of the wing, just doing a bit of contour hatching like this. It's very relaxing this, very calming. I don't know if you've noticed but I haven't changed my pen. You do get your favourites, um, just like you have favourite brushes, favourite pencils. Um, and, there's, and because the inks are slightly different, you do get slightly different colouring, so one may be more blue than the other. Um, one may be more black or whatever and if you do have a different pen it does show if you kind of start um, halfway through your picture so it's better to pick, pick one pen and stick with it really a little bit of shadow at the bottom of the wing like that I'm not going to do much more because I feel like I could go really heavy and I don't really want to do that Okay, so that's my contouring on the body and on the top parts of the wings. Right, this is my next stage. As you can see here, I've um, put the solid black in, which actually really helps. It really gives an attitude of the bird and it really firms up, you know, um, the body and it helps everything make a bit more sense. You can see that I've got the different shading and the two different tones, excuse me, between the tops of the um, wings. This picture I wanted to show you, this is where I did quite a lot of work on the wings. Um, these are quite tricky. If you look at the source picture, um, each of the wings are different. There's a different ending to the wings. I mean, one here that's quite triangular, some of them are more rounded. Um, some of them are really quite light, some of them are quite dark. Um, so you have to look at the wings almost individually. This is um, a version of the drawing, so you can see um, they all end slightly differently. Um, it's really important to look at the um, positive space, which is taken up by the wings, but also the negative space. So for instance, here you've almost got a curved triangle cut out here um, which would help describe 
these two the edges of these two wings but also on this one you've got a small thin triangle here and then it becomes almost a fatter triangle at the bottom um, so yes it's worth looking at the negative and the positive space when you're drawing these so as you can see they're all drawn um, in pencil first and I've mainly concentrated on the central line and then I've started to try and firm up the outside edges of the feathers if you can see here some of my pencil marks some of my feathers finish here which is not good when the other two uh, finish there so it's good to have a line uh, where you roughly in pencil obviously roughly get um, the curve of the wing um, <clears throat> so you have them all at the, roughly the same uh, length um, but then you also see the differences between the feathers so it does take time but it does completely pay off once you've worked out the shapes and the measurements of those um, feathers okay so the next step really is to look at the definition in the wing in the feathers so as we said each of the wings are different and we do have to understand where the, where the light is coming from it's coming from the top and it's coming from the right so largely most of the highlights are going to be on the right hand side and they're probably going to be at the top can't say that for all of them though as I said before the feathers in the source um, image um, have got different areas of lightness and darkness um, and also in your drawing it's variety that's going to make it the most interesting so um, getting these beautiful patterns um, in the feathers is really going to be the thing that really sells your um, painting that sells your drawing so how to do the feathers so it's quite um, it's quite easy to get lost in this it's quite nice to count them and make sure that you're kind of the right one across um in order to make sure you're drawing the right one <laughs> which is always a good thing um okay so i'm concentrating on this feather here and like i say you do have to treat them really one by one so i'm going to get my center line in first like this And then in pencil, I've drawn the um, the way the feather um, is shaped. Now this is rare. This is probably the only art form that I can think of right now where you actually do draw an outline. Don't often draw an outline. Um, it's not usually. <coughs> important in art you usually draw from the middle out or you draw shapes and then join them together but with pen and uh, with pen and pen and ink and things like that um, you do actually draw an outline especially in a picture like this where it's so important um, to get those shapes right um, what I've done is I've drawn them in a light flicky way I haven't given them a hard outline if something needs to be stressed and it needs to be darker you can then go over it later again golden rule don't go too dark or too heavy too quickly um, because it's very difficult to come back from that okay so i'm looking at my drawing and looking at my shading and the shading seems to be largely at the bottom of the feather in this area here so i'm going to work from the top and i'm going to work lightly now to get an idea of how the feather is made up, an impression of getting an accurate feather, what I'm doing is I'm starting from the um, inside of the feather, I'm starting from the central line and I'm then flicking out. Um, again, all my pressure is when I first apply my stroke and then the, the mark kind of fades out with less pressure at the end of the flick which is really nice because then you can tease them out further if you want and if you think do you know what that's fine I don't want to go completely to the edge then you've kind of done that naturally already so I'm just doing my first layer and I'm just going around I do enjoy this bit this bit is really quite relaxing just putting some more in at the bottom like that so you're already getting a sense of the light and the dark 
already. Um, so this is quite light at the top, so I'm going to leave that for a minute and I'm going to go in with a second layer or maybe a third layer, I'm not sure, um, just to make this darker. Like that. It does feel time consuming, but this is actually quite a quick, and you, you get your rewards quite quickly. It's quite nice if you're impatient like I am. So I'm just evening it out a little bit like that. If you wanted to create um, more darkness, and actually I would quite like to firm up that central line now. So I'm just going over that. And you can take your hatching out. And it helps to give you that the curve in the feather like that. Okay. Now we're going to look at the other side. Now there are quite... Um, sort of ripples in the feather and I don't want my ripples to be exactly the same as these it's very easy to do them all the same way and we don't really want that um, so I'm going to I've got a darker ripple kind of here so I'm going to mark them in quickly so then I know what I'm doing if you know where you're going it's easier to get there like that so I've got my dark areas in and then I'm going to make the centre of them that little bit darker, like that. So you're slowly building up all the time. And then I'm going to soften it off. And I'm just going to space them out and use lighter pressure going back up. Soften it out. Get the light bits in into the middle, like that. And you end up with these ripple effects. Now for me, I would like a little bit more contrast at the top. This side and this side look a bit similar and I don't want that. Like I say, it's the contrast that makes these things wowy. So I'm going over the centre line and I'm just putting another layer in the centre, the middle part of that left hand side of the feather, like that. Okay. And then the feather next to that is much simpler actually. So I'll put the centre line in first like that. Now the work's done for me because I've already drawn it all in, which is lovely. We like that. Rough in the outside edge like that. And this side is feather. Is quite light so you can just lightly flick this way it doesn't have any ridges or anything like that okay that's a bit messy so I'm gonna go over it a little bit tidy it up a bit 